Yeah! Welcome back. Playoff preview series, day two. You are currently watching uh, Jacksonville, LA, maybe San Francisco, Seattle. Every time you see one of these videos, that means the games we talk about in the videos are being played the following day. So throughout the entirety of the playoffs, we will be previewing every single game. Today's slate, the Sunday slate, Dolphins at Bills, the New York football G-Men Giants at Minnesota, and the Baltimore Ravens at Cincinnati. Decent slate of games. Uh, it's probably only one good game, at least on the spread. I, I No, I take that back. I take that back. We got three great games. Got, every, you're right. Every NFL game is a phenomenal game. It's God a damn. standalone. It's all or nothing. Win or go home. But Sometimes that's all you need. You just need a hand. Someone's, you're down in the trenches, and you, you just need to see a hand come over come over the hill, and you grab it, and then the energy is right by. There we go. Needed that. All good games are good, except for this one that we're about to talk about to kick they're, off. They're great Sunday. Dolphins at Bills. Yeah. Uh, well, Skylar Thompson takes the uh, the quarterback spot. They just announced him being the starter. 1 p.m. Eastern time. Weather concerns, no real implications. It's just going to be cold in Buffalo because it's always cold in Buffalo. Without a real quarterback at play here, no Tua, obviously. Uh, largest spread in wild card history. The Bills are 13.5-point favorites. The over-under is 43.5 points. Yeah, the, the, the previous record was the Chiefs minus 11.5 last year versus Pittsburgh. So this is a game where I don't even know if there's much to talk about outside of the actual storyline of the game, what happens in the game, but the Bills, in theory, should dis discard this team, right? Is yeah, it, they're going to dismantle them. Is, it's there any, is, there any way, is there any way that doesn't happen, I guess is my question. No. I outside don't of think like a Josh Allen, JFK situation. Sniped be, on the snowy hill. <laughs> that would be tragic. Uh, even <laughs> that, I I think Case Keenum could beat Skylar Thompson Dolphins. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you take Josh Allen out and actually put Case Keenum in the game, <laughs> yeah. I'm still taking the Bills, probably like minus four and a half. Yeah. Uh, so it's ugly. Honestly, I, I'm down to skip kind of to the, the prize pick squares, the game predictions, and move on to the next one because it doesn't really feel like there's a lot going on here. Animal did, did put some interesting stats and storylines in the game. The Dolphins uh, own the second longest active streak without a playoff win, which is 20 one years, and he also threw in strike. Streak will most likely continue. He loved that. He threw a little passive aggressiveness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, like they're they're dead on arrival. It's, it's cool that they're here. Uh, maybe not. I mean, I'm sure the Steelers would have gave them, uh, the Bills a better better match, but it is what it is. Yeah, we all. I mean, we all have we all have the Bills winning pretty big. All have the Bills covering the spread, thirteen and a half points. I couldn't imagine even at that large of a spread, like no one's going to take Skylar Thompson against his team. No, I actually just took uh, Bills full game spread and half spread of minus seven and a half. I parlayed them together. They're going to get up early and they're going to stay up forever. You're a big, big first half guy. I am. I'm <laughs> coming around on the first half plays. I don't know why. They're not really working out, but sure, I'm going to keep riding them. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, the quicker you can get the result, the quicker you get that, right. that hit, whether it's I, good I, or bad. Then better. I know if I need to place another one to make <laughs> exactly. up for my first half loss. <laughs> I'm not high anymore. I need yeah, another one. Exactly. Uh, when I look at these prize picks squares, what I try to do is I kind of tell the story of the game in a sense, and I, and I feel like that spread is just extremely telling. So you can go – one of a few ways, right? You can look at the Miami offense being wildly inefficient, so you could take the players less than on the Miami side. I'm more in tune with playing on the Buffalo side of things. I don't think they're going to have to throw the ball a ton, right? I don't think they're going to have to take a lot of shots downfield. So I'm looking at Gabe Davis less than 48 and a half receiving yards. He has gone under this number, under 48 and a half, in five out of the last six games. He is a big play guy, a big down the field target type dude. And again, I think with the way that this game script probably unfolds, James Cook gets a lot of touches. Devin Singletary gets a lot of touches. Obviously, Diggs and Knox will probably get their stuff going. I just don't see a real... Like, the only way I think Davis gets over this is if he makes a big play. And I think maybe he gets one to two shots downfield. So if he doesn't connect on it, I just don't think he hits this number. He hasn't done it in a while. He's been wildly inconsistent. Yeah, I like that. I just think uh, the one thing that worries me is Dolphins feel very susceptible to big plays through the air. So... If, the, if Gabe Davis is going to have a vintage ceiling Gabe Davis day, kind of feels like it's going to be this one. Although the opportunity probably shrinks exponentially as the game goes on and the Dolphins refuse to score any so points. Now that if he's going to get it done, it's going to be in the first half. Now, these teams have played twice. Miami beat them back in Week 3, 21-19. Obviously, two was playing. They played in Week 15, and uh, the Bills won this one, 32-29. 
Gabe Davis had 56 yards receiving in week 16, uh, week 15. He had 37 yards receiving week three. So it's kind of been up in the air, but either way, he's never smashed his number. It's never made me feel comfortable. He has consistently just finished between like 30 and 60 yards the entirety of the season. And the ceiling that we thought we had in like the first couple weeks of the season just really has flattened out. Yeah. I mean, after that week one game against the Rams Thursday night, you would never expect to be at this point where his line is at three receptions, but here we are. It's like what he does. Yeah. Yeah. So last game against uh, the, these two teams, Josh Allen had four touchdowns, was absolutely dominant through the air and on the ground. So I'm going to go with the price pick square of Josh Allen to have over two and a half touchdowns. That's passing, that's rushing. Maybe they get tricky with it and he gets a receiving touchdown. That counts towards it. So it's good to have that angle in there. But wildcard weekend is for trick plays. Exactly. Wildcard weekend is getting in your in your Santa bag and throwing out all the gifts you have. Josh Allen receiving touchdowns. Josh Allen throwing a touchdown to himself could happen. Two touchdowns. That's in two one. in one play. Would that? Would that? It has know? to. It, well, it's it, never been done before. They would have. Mahomes to. caught that pass the other day. He and if he ran and it in there, receiving, yeah, that, that's two. That's insane. That's absolutely. That could be like a two. seventeen point fantasy. I would play. riot if it's only one. That'd be amazing. Yeah, but um, so the Dolphins, uh, their pass defense is pretty awful. They're more of a uh, run funnel defense. They're they're good at stopping the run against running backs. At least they they give up the second most rushing yards to quarterbacks. It's kind of a weird stat because it really depends on who you're playing. Like a lot of the damage has uh, against the Dolphins in terms of opposing quarterbacks rushing against them mostly comes against Lamar and Justin Fields. But Josh Allen has been really successful against them. Last game he had 77 rushing yards. But I think the biggest reason why I like this square over like Josh Allen fantasy points or something like that is because without the Dolphins offense being able to move the ball I think there's going to be a lot of punting on their part I think there's going to be a lot of turnovers and I think there's going to be a lot of short fields for this Buffalo offense so I think Josh Allen and the Bills are going to live in the red zone it's going to be real easy for him to scramble in for one you know maybe flip one to Dawson Knox any way you want to do it But what's most important is they're going to dominate time of possession. They're out there playing for DeMar Hamlin. How do you not get at least three touchdowns, Josh Allen? First playoff game after the DeMar incident. After you took an exit out of playoffs last year, this is your time against the easiest opposing team you will ever face in playoffs. Unless they meet the New York Giants, which is our next scheduled game. The Giants will travel to Minnesota, something they did just a few weeks ago to take on the Vikings. They are three-point favorites, Minnesota, at home, over-under of 48-and-a-half. This is Daniel Jones' first playoff appearance. It's about damn time. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the Giants are, as Animal put on the sheet, a magical team right now. They feel a little bit like a team of destiny, and this is how it's always felt with them when they get into the playoffs. They make these runs from... Uh, a, a seed in which it's it's deeply planted into the ground, and you say, "Hey, we don't think this this flower is going to sprout yet." But there it goes; it pops through. It pops through the soil, and you, it feels like you're not buying this. Right? I'm now. not buying it at all. Are I'm not buying me? the whole like rose growing out of the concrete narrative of this team. That's what they've done. How do you think they won their Super Bowls? I understand that, but I'm I'm just not banking on it again. I don't even think they win this game against the Vikings. I have a tough time. Feeling like they're going to win, too. I, th- this is such a tough pick because it just feels like I, I don't know who either team is. Right. They're both frauds. 18 weeks into the season, I just don't know who they are. Yeah, but I, I think the best unit on the field out of these two teams is the Vikings offense. So, yeah, they played in Week 16 at Minnesota. Minnesota won 27-24. to 24. Uh, Both offenses statistically kind of exploded. I thought the Giants kind of, like, won the game in the trenches, and there was a couple, like, unlucky things that happened that gave Minnesota... Uh, the win, but I think the story is like there's nothing defensively really on either side of the uh, of the ball here or either either team that like scares me away from any sort of offensive skill position. You know, like yeah. Minnesota's run D, pass D, the Giants run D, pass D. None of them are like great. They, they're giving up a lot of points, a lot of yards, a lot of production uh, to every player basically on the field. So it feels like it should be a high scoring game. It feels like a game where like Daniel Jones will have his athleticism kind of take over mm-hmm. and. You know, they'll move the chains, and then Minnesota will... I think Kirk had 350 passing yards, like three touchdowns. He had one of his biggest yeah. statistical games of the year um, coming in that one, so it could be high scoring. Yeah, um, I think the total of 48 is is pretty generous. I think this... We could definitely see this go into the 50s. I think so, too. I, th- I think it's going to be bet into the 50s pretty much because everyone's going to kind of be looking at it the same way. I did take the Giants plus three in this one. I 
feel like I mean you you have them at twenty eight to twenty seven. Yeah, no, I think I think Vikings win and somehow don't cover the spread. I mean Vikings have, a, like a miracle point differential number with as many wins as they have. They have a negative point differential, which is absurd. This has to be a one score game. Like both these teams just play into too many one score games for this to be a blowout either way. So I think the smart side is the Giants plus three, but I really just don't see them winning it. Giants finished the regular season 13 and four against the spread. The most profitable, profitable team against the spread in the entire NFL. Right. So they're going to, they're going to lose by one. They're going to lose by one. I could see it happening. Uh, I think I think the Vikings are the better team. I think they have more playmakers. I think they have more in place to win the game. It just feels like I don't know when when the Vikings get into like scraps, they usually don't come out on on top. That's that's the way I feel, and I feel like the Giants are just a scrappy ass team at this point. Do you do you think uh, Jefferson has a a bounce back this week? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he torched the Giants last week, uh, or not last week? Last time they played, he had 16 targets, 12 receptions, 133 yards, and a touchdown. I think you can take any one of Justin Jefferson's squares, whether it's his receiving yards, his receptions. I'm going to go with his fantasy points. It's a high bar, 19 and a half, but we see Justin Jefferson crush this line all the time. In the last month or so, you know, he was he was shut down by the Packers. I think we can throw away the Bears game. Didn't even play that full game. But this last, is full PPR, by the way. This is full PPR on prize picks. We're talking about Justin Jefferson throwing up totals of 32, 30, 33, um, and these are none of these are good pass defenses that he's dominating, but like neither are the Giants. Yeah, no, Giants secondary is atrocious. They might be getting the Dory Jackson back, but I I really don't think that matters too much. That's really going to contribute more to how much man versus zone that they play. Giants blitz at a high rate, which you know normally gets Kirk Cousins a little uncomfortable, but it really didn't seem to affect them last time they matched up. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, Pro Football Focus has the Giants ranked as the second to last team in coverage, twentieth in pass rush, and we we've just been we've been saying it. It's going to be a high scoring game. Justin Jefferson is matchup proof. This is his time, you know. Dal- Dalvin Cook has also just died. Like the Vikings can't run the ball anymore, so he can't run the ball. His rushing yardage line feels like a little bit high too. I, I have no faith in him. He left the Week 18's game early with an injury ended up coming back in, but I, I don't know if I see them like riding him in this game or in the no. playoffs whatsoever. I don't, I don't, it's hard. I don't imagine you can like trust him to be the guy to take you out the playoffs here. Um, on the giant side of the ball though, I'm, I'm intrigued by Isaiah Hodgins and I was looking at different squares and I'm like, do I want to go with the reception to the targets or whatever? But I found an interesting touchdown prop that I really like. So what I did was I looked at Isaiah Hodgins and they also have TJ Hawkinson there. So they give you a Hodgins plus Hawkinson, 0.5 total touchdown. So if either of them gets into the end zone, you win that. I'm thinking, all right, what have these guys been doing end zone? Because a lot of time you, it, when you're following fantasy, you kind of just get lost in like the numbers being really high. Like, oh, Hodgins going like five for 90 every week or whatever. A lot of these guys don't get into the end zone. Mm-hmm. But we look, at, uh, we look back at one when they played against each other. Hawkinson against the Giants week 16, 16 targets, 13 catches, 109 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. Hodgins, 12 targets, eight catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Hodgins has also scored four touchdowns in the last five games. Like these guys are getting into the end zone and producing at a really high level. I need one of them to get in. We think it's going to be a high scoring game. Hodgins has been one of, if not the most productive target in the Giants offense over the last month, over the last two months. Look back at, um, you know, since like week 12, when he started becoming a 70% plus snap player, he's a guy getting six to 10 targets per game. He's like a really big staple of this offense. So one of them gets into the end zone. We cash. That's a great square. You put it that way of how many times these uh, these guys scored against each other like that. They, had, they both like had lock. like, yeah, they both had like season highs going against each other. And that speaks to like the offenses playing against each other and how they match up here. Basically, it's just defenses letting everybody fucking run awry. And then the offense is having to kind of play catch up. And these are two of the better weapons on the field at the time. If you're not on prize picks yet, you should go download the app or go to the website. It'll be linked down below and use promo code BDGE. If it's your first time on there, they will hit you with a 100% deposit match. So you can tell us, you can fade us, you can do whatever you want throughout the playoffs. But we will be doing these videos every single game throughout the playoffs. All right, so finality, Animal has the Giants winning 27-24. So he obviously takes the plus three there. I will take the Giants plus three. Um, I'm just going to say Giants outright. I think Giants, I'm going to say Giants win the game. 
Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair play. I mean, at three points, you're you're really only covering like a a, a push with that extra field goal. I, I will say Giants in a teaser feels like an amazing leg just because, yeah. like I said, it's going to probably be a one-score game. Real quickly, you know what I did? I parlayed Giants plus 7.5 with Vikings plus 7.5. <laughs> what? So if it, if it stays within 7, that's a hit. They let you do that? Yeah. I'm surprised. Right, because one of the teams is going to win, so they'll cover. Sure. The other team just as has long to not as it's lose not like by a blowout. Really. Yeah, it yeah. just has to be a seven point game. Interesting. That cashes. That's crazy. <laughs> I know, isn't it? <laughs> You're a psycho. <laughs> I feel so good about it. All right. Uh, the Ravens cannot feel good about their current situation as they take on the Bengals in the night game. The Bengals are nine and a half point favorites. The over under is forty and a half points. Obviously, because Lamar Jackson is not playing. We have Tyler Huntley. Playing QB. Has that been announced? Is that official? Uh, I don't see. The thing like is, is it, this line was chilling at like six and a half for a minute. And I feel like that was a split between Huntley and Brown. And then because it fell down to nine, I kind of feel like uh, either Brown was announced a starter or it's looking like Huntley's not going to play. Tyler Huntley moving toward being available for the Ravens while Lamar Jackson is still out of action. So Okay, so maybe the six and a half was there to split Lamar and a backup. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, Huntley probably plays, and I think Huntley's a better. Uh, he's been so bad this year, but he's also still a better option than Anthony Brown. No one's Brown. as bad as Anthony Brown. Yeah, like there's if Anthony Brown's on the field, they I, I'd be surprised if they racked up uh, 170 total yards of offense. Dude Even was a turnover that. machine. He it, literally it, did last, last week. week it was so bad. Yeah, um, so it, it's going to be a nightmare for the Ravens. I do think this ends up being like I mean, it's one of those divisional games where obviously Cincinnati has a ton of firepower on offense. I feel like the Ravens are a team. They get into playoff mode. Like, they drag you into the mud. They drag yeah. you into the muck. So, I feel like this is going to be – their offense is not going to score, but I feel like their defense is good enough, especially with, like, Roquan Smith really turning shit up now, to drag Cincinnati down. So, I think Cincinnati wins this game pretty easily, but I will take the points of the Ravens 9.5 for sure because I just feel like it's – the game will never get away to the point where, like, 10 points is easily being accumulated by the other team. No, I think this is going to, I agree with you. I think this is going to be a super low scoring game. Ravens just know how to match up with the Bengals really well. They change their entire defensive scheme whenever they play them. Um, just the last two games that the Ravens played the Bengals, they, they switched to a ton of two high safety. And like you said, Roquan Smith has been an absolute baller for them. He and, you know, the other linebackers there are great at swarming, and they force Joe Burrow to, you know, dump off the ball and, and play around the line of scrimmage. I, I'm I'm a little nervous that the Ravens fuck around and win this game. Because mm. I have... Don't be I, nervous if you're taking them. Well, man. the problem is, is I, I, I... You should parlay. I plus put nine the, and a half and the money line. I should. But, I no, I put... Uh, I, have a, I have a bet in for the Bengals to win the AFC. And now I'm looking at this game like I don't even know if they're going to get out of the first round. Well, um, Animal's got some great stats here. Uh, Bengals, 4-0 against the spread in the playoffs last season. Burrow is 19-4 and against the spread in his last 23 starts. Expected temperature of 36 degrees. Joe Burrow in weather 40 degrees or fewer or less. 7-0 straight up, 6-1 and against the spread. Wow. I, I just feel like it don't matter. At the, like, no, none of that matters. None of that matters. Just <laughs> cool fucking <laughs> statistics. Uh, there's nothing that makes me feel good about this Bengals team, to be honest. Uh, the only thing that makes me feel good about the Bengals is that the Ravens don't have Lamar. But it's nothing about the Bengals that make me feel good. I mean, you don't feel good about like Burrow and Chase and Higgins? No. How? Because this is... Okay, so I'm going back and forth on this. I'm trying to fade one of the Joes here. Either Joe Mixon. Burrow Mixon. or Joe Mixon. Mixon. Mixon? 100%. I mean, I, I understand why. Like, It's a good run defense. The Ravens allow the third, third fewest rushing yards... Mixon only totaled 68 last week. Uh, he didn't play 100%, but, you know, he, he struggled a little bit against uh, the Ravens in the past. But I'm, I, yeah. I, I, I'm also worried about Joe Burrow, though, because his EPA per play goes way down whenever he's facing the Ravens. His yards per attempt go way down. His percentage of passes that are just, like, at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage goes way up. I think le the less than 282 total yards is, is a pretty – it's a pretty good uh, square to take there. Yeah, yeah. So that's over the mixing one. I mean, I, I'm fading mixing too. I'm I'm trying to decide between I have Dobbins at more than nine and a half fantasy points, right? Just double digit fantasy points, full PPR, 
Uh, Dobbins coming off the rested week, like yeah. I feel like they're just going to unleash him and let him get 18 touches or something. Like he's going to get nine fantasy points on 18 touches. Yeah, definitely. I, I took his over rushing yard 61 and a half. I think that's a good one. But that that's another aspect of this game is like the Ravens kind of had a bye last week. Mm-hmm. They're going to have Andrews back. They're going to have Dobbins. They're going to have uh, a, a guard, Kevin Zeitler. They're going to have some defensive players back. And the Bengals just lost the lineman last game. They lost the right guard. Yeah. Their their right side of the line is now out. They're playing with a bunch of backups. I got Mixon at less than five and a half targets, too. I feel like I get, I get that he's been producing at a high level in the passing game, but that's not a normal line. He's No, it's for, not. For him to hit. He's hit it like four times this year, four or five times this year, but uh, I don't think that's like the standard. I don't think their game plan is going to be like dump it off to Mixon, especially when you have guys like Roquan Smith, like fast linebackers. Yes. You know, those are – those are guys that I don't know if they cover them well or they really affect the targets, but I, I think it's something that makes you think twice about it when you're looking at this Baltimore offense. Yeah, and also defense. P. Ryan plays a lot of those uh, snaps on third down and, and those receiving, you know, those screen plays. So I, I'm worried about Joe Burrow. I'm worried about Joe Mixon. Uh, my, I'm going to finalize my square with Joe Burrow less than 282.5 passing and rushing. Um, his passing line is 272, so they're projecting him to have about 10 rushing yards. He really doesn't surpass that very often. I'd be surprised it, if he just goes, yeah, like goes 290, 300 total yards against Ravens defense. Yeah, it it just feels like a a very slow paced, low scoring, grind it out type of game. And I'm worried. I'm worried about the Bengals. I want the Bengals to make it, but I just don't think they match up against these Ravens well. we'll Ravens see. know them well. It'll be it'll be exciting, yeah. For my my official square pick, I like that. We should we should label that <laughs> our picks, our official square picks, our official square the opposite picks of sharp is uh, go with. I'm going I, mixing less than five and a half. Really, minutes. I was going to say go with Dobbins. I'm going with both. My You're official going square both. picks, both. Yeah. All right. One's, one's horizontal, one's vertical. There we, we go. Got a square. Uh, yes, prize picks. Go go tell us on prize picks. Go fade us on prize picks. Do whatever you want, but we are in consensus here. We like the Ravens plus nine and a half. Animal took the Bengals minus nine and a half. He's a big Joey B guy. You can tell all the all the stats was pushing his own narrative. He's also not thinking straight. He's throwing up his guts right now. He he had some bad chicken teriyaki. Like he's that's like, he's like Lamar at halftime. Last yeah, playoff season. He, he's shitting that. his brains out. He's not really focused on the spread here. He's he, he doesn't realize what he do. He knows not what he has done. <laughs> Don't blame the boy. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back next weekend, hopefully for uh, divisional round to stick up for himself but for now mr no dimes and i will finish out the series uh tomorrow is just a one game slate it's the bucks and cowboys bucks and cowboys for monday night football uh enjoy the playoff weekend make sure you download the prize picks app use promo code bdge and we will be fight tomorrow love you bang